Hey guys, Sven here with a new Northcast market update for October 27th. Markets at a crossroad. Last time I talked about the robo market it hasn't really changed. We keep holding up in the top end of the range, uh, but there's some funky little things going on uh, that I wanted to highlight. Look, we're facing a very contentious U.S. election uh, in just about nine, ten days, uh, and then we have another Fed meeting, and of course, tons of earnings rumbling through the markets. So a lot of data points and a lot of uh, potential triggers either way. Uh, on Friday, I had a opportunity to speak with the fast money team on over in cnbc and we made a couple of key points one is you know we're in the middle of another key liquidity rally and generally you know viewing also the year-end rally kind of scenario as very possible if nothing changes although i have a bunch of concerns at least in the short term here and the question i'm raising is whether we're still going to have a corrective move i mean these markets have run up 11 months out of the last 12 months pretty much every week is up even though last week was down slightly um the the direction and the trend and bulls remain all in full control and in, in a uniform direction but i have some concerns so as i said on twitter i'll point out those concerns for what it's worth if you will but let's be clear this year-end rally case is now basically you know fully embraced in terms of consensus and sentiment or what have you which is kind of ironic because at the end of last year the year in targets on average here were about 48.61 medium 48.75 and the price action has blown everything out of the water including the the most bullish forecast here you can see and here we are at 5800 if you will round about and everybody's screaming higher you know 67 62 70 6600 no more dips basically this is from goldman sachs and nothing but upside going forward that's i mean that's consensus that has me kind of squeamish frankly um because what has really changed here you know there's you can say yes earnings have improved yes they were expected to improve but they didn't improve as much basically as they were foretold and of course everybody has better earnings forecasted again next year i'm just saying this this has all been again an exercise in futility uh and so you know consensus has been wrong for a few years in both directions but now they're catching up but let me tell you why i'm saying this is a liquidity rally and this is kind of an eye-opening chart i think for everybody if we look at the last few years we've had in my opinion i call them super rallies the rallies that go on and on and on with hardly any two-way price discovery in between the first big one here came on the heels of the earnings recession 2015 2016. this is when we ended the era of and this was also the you know the previous election eight years ago uh, we ran into tax cuts obviously and global qe it was just massive liquidity coming into markets and nothing but up here's the monthly five ema support all the time we had a, another big mega rally i should also point out you know then we cut or hiked rates right the balance sheet was being uh, reduced and the fed was hiking rates and then they flip-flopped right and then everything went back up right balance sheet was expanded then we had an event and then came the next big mega rally the super rally that was driven by global qe and zip and fiscal stimulus and everything else and guess what then they raised rates again and we had a little down move right for that year in 2022 but then starting october 22 everything went straight back up and we got back into the next liquidity driven rally and how's that possible with rate hikes and and everything else well before i get to that i just want to highlight the big message here all of these big rallies all of them are policy driven policy makers central banks governments the only time you have any downside in markets on any sort of sustained basis is when liquidity equation changes when they raise rates when they raise rates right 
Uh, and then, of course, you know, if you have an event like COVID, but see how quickly that was erased, right? Because the policy machine again goes up. And what's the big message here? We are now here. And the, the message is, you know, global central banks are cutting rates, da, 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 da. So they are embarking on this new easing journey. And the reason this actually, despite rate hikes, was a liquidity driven rally is something else altogether, fiscal dominance. And we cannot underestimate, and I've been saying this since January, I was talking about you know, the market, the Cynics Guide to Markets, we talked about the overing power force of uh, fiscal dominance in context of these massive deficits that, are, that they're running. That's what was 23 all about, $1.6 trillion deficit. And now this year it got even worse. And the question I ask is, can you even have a recession with this type of fiscal dominance running in the background fiscal deficits are stimulative and them making it worse this year pretty much put everything on the path where you can claim the economy is so resilient oh my god the economy is so resilient and it keeps growth the growth picture up it's debt finance uh and i hate to say it there is no end in sight because it keeps going. I mean, this was the primary bullish case for this year. It was for last year. And, you know, frankly, that's why we're bullish all year. But now we're getting kind of to this crossroads issues where it kind of gets tricky. And I want to highlight a few things here. But again, be clear, this is not stopping. And what we just saw in literally the last month was all of a sudden the Yellen team pumping in another half a trillion dollars in just four weeks. Why? How? That's six trillion dollars annualized. By the way, maybe that's that's the key explanation why suddenly in October, rising yields, rising dollar, nothing mattered. No news item mattered because they just flushed it through in a big way, conveniently, just ahead of the election. To me, that's one of the concerns, frankly, because now all of a sudden we disconnected from everything. And I submit to you, this is not sustainable. The election is going to be over soon. And then all this liquidity, this incremental liquidity is not there. And that can cause maybe kind of a rebalancing because something like this would cause an imbalance. And that's my view based on what we've seen with these disconnects uh, from yields and dollar and what have you. But again, main message is this continuous. And here comes China again. More stimulus to boost the assumption. Again, policy. It's never the organic economy, it's policymakers driving everything. And here we go, early November, there you go. That's another argument to say, well, it's just going to keep going because they just keep printing and printing and printing, what have you. And again, it's not stopping. No matter who wins next year, and both candidates, I said on the interview too, both candidates are promising the moon uh, in terms of additional spending or getting rid of taxes or this, that, and the other. These are all going to be contributing to even further deficits so yeah we're going to looking be looking at 40 trillion dollars before you know it you know remember last year they talked about oh maybe we're going to have a 50 trillion dollar debt by 2030 well all this is heading to much bigger debt before you even know it and when you talk about the u.s being this you know island in the sun with this great economic growth well what well, who is driving all this debt spending who who drives more debt spending than anyone else on the planet well it's the u.s it's just fact but here comes the really bizarre thing you know we we got the, in this cycle we got the monetary tightening right by the fed high interest rates well guess what consumers ain't happy typically when you have a grown economy and you have markets at record highs you got fairly high consumer confidence you know in the 90s at least or hundreds or whatever we even had it here before covid and this year i think it improved a little bit here on friday's report but the message is this is pitiful it's weak and that concerns me and i'll tell you why because what we've done in a way not we but you know these policy makers is they created liquidity backstops, you know, with the bank intervention in 23, with the QE, I mean, the, excuse me, the treasury buybacks this year, constantly running easing financial conditions for two years straight. 
and it's boosted asset prices up, and it's radically, again, expanded the wealth gap. The rich don't care if rates are high, but everybody else that can't afford housing, has to make ends meet, is stuck with the higher prices permanently. That's the majority of consumers. Again, 90% of stocks owned by the top 10%. They're not happy. And, you know, with this election coming up, that appears to be the most contentious ever with the most, I guess, extreme portraying of the other side. I mean, both sides are basically talking about democracy will end after this election one way or the other. I, I cannot predict anything on this front at all, so I'm not even going to bother. I'm just saying it's highly emotional and there's going to be a lot of people disappointed no matter who wins. And I don't know how they're going to re react. No idea. Hopefully nothing bad will happen, right? And we have clear winner and, you know, you can all debate about how Congress will play and maybe the debt construct will just keep going and all is fine and that supports the year in the rally. But I think this cycle has clearly been completely disconnected vis-a-vis -vis all previous cycles. The consumer is not happy. And you always, with an ever-widening wealth gap, and this has been my point for a very long time, you risk at some point social instability. It's a concern. It's not a tradable event or signal. I'm just pointing it out. It's not, it's a big bifurcation, and I don't think it's, it's healthy. And then, of course, you know, I can make the case with all this liquidity, are you doing overkill? And that has that negative consequences. Because this, let's be absolutely clear, when the Fed cut rates here in September, they did, none of them projected this. No one has. You know, a little bounce maybe, but this extreme move here is very intense. Okay. And I'm just looking, and by the way, Druckenmiller, who is one of the smartest investors out there, you know, he, he took a short position. I saw his interview. He's talking about 5.5% possibly. Well, that actually fits with that bull flag that we're seeing here. And remember, we had a bull flag before. I mean, un inconceivable, right, with rate cuts going on. I, I have a hard time believing it myself, but, you know, I see what the charts are doing. And that generally does not make sense to expect that to play out without any negative effects. Now, I don't know if it's going to play out. Maybe it's going to bounce around for months. Who knows? But I think the general concern is that we're going to have a breakout and markets are not prepared for that at all. And let's not forget, I know everybody's eyes are glazing over, the valuation components that we're seeing we've never seen before. Okay, It's not only market cap to GDP. Point is the markets are historically expensive. It's how it's composed. In 2017, during that first super rally that I talked about, you know what happened in 2017? There were headlines. For the first time ever, a company reached a $1 trillion market cap valuation. And guess what? That was Apple. And we're only seven years forward, and now we have suddenly three companies in excess of $3 trillion, heck, $3.5 trillion. That's $10.5 trillion in combined market cap. And that $10.5 trillion in combined market cap has a average price to sales ratio of 19 you know that that is completely off the charts there's no there's no precedence for this the, these markets are expensive and of course you got forward multiples to the roof this market is 22 forward multiple and some of these absolute top companies have forward multiples that are much higher there's not much room for error now you you're free to buy all this i'm just personally saying you know having a bit of a hard time justifying deploying new capital into this valuation concept, which brings me now to the the technical bit, and this is where the crossroads co bit comes in. You know, we've been squeezing high all year. We've had a couple of pullbacks, as you know, here in April, that quick flush in August, and I say quick because it was just a few days. Same with the down week in September, and we've now nestled ourselves into a new steep uptrend we're hitting trend line resistance and all new highs have still come on a negative divergence. So this is the crossroads here going into the election. 
As I said earlier, everybody's expecting higher prices, no one expecting any sort of down move basically of size into the end of the year. And perhaps if this just liquidity flush keeps controlling everything, then nothing will happen. I'm just saying the market is at a crossroad. It has to either push above this trend line or it's risking a break here of this uptrend, which then still opens up a corrective move. And we can all debate how strong that corrective move may be. And let me also say, because I'm going to be accused of being a perma bear again, if, even if you get a corrective move here, it's probably going to set up for a buy. The, the, the bull trend is not broken until you break below this trend line and break below the 21, excuse me, the January 22 high. So this could just be a corrective move that sets, it up, sets itself up for yet another year in the rally, which, you know, depending on the size of the move, may very well be justified. And is highlighting... You know, this negative divergence has not been invalidated. It was a major warning signs before as we kind of squeeze up into those final new highs. So obviously next week and the week of the election is going to be highly decisive in this regard, which I'll finish off with this chart here. That is the daily version because we've talked about this cup and handle, which real still remains valid. It's not been invalidated. And that, as I pointed out, said 6200. But at the same time, you know, seeing a wedge build here as things have been tightening again, negative divergence even on the daily. And there was a tiny break last week and it back tested and then it's kind of sitting just below it. So that's why I think this next two weeks will probably be the key to decide everything and markets have to make a technical decision. Uh, liquidity basically says stay structurally bullish into 2025 and buy corrections and pullbacks if if we get them um, but valuations and technicals also suggest at this point in this time to also build some cash and flexibility in case we get a sizable correction still before the end of the year hope that's all helpful if you want to know how we're navigating through all this you're welcome to sign up via market services at northmantrader.com hope that's helpful and uh, good luck good luck the next couple of weeks i'm sure it'll be very intense take care